Hey, I'm Dave, and I'm going to talk about how I edited this Twilight here. Um, but more than that, I think we're going to go into some of the problems that you can have, not just while shooting Twilights, but while shooting in general. Um, and my method for how I correct those, how I fix those. Um, I've already edited this one, and I noticed a couple things when I was doing it, a couple things I had to do to make the image work out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit a different piece and I hope in the process of editing that piece I'm going to have the same problem so I can show you how to work through them. Uh, but more importantly, I think, is just getting across the idea that um, no picture is perfect. No picture is made from one picture. You know, it's uh, our job to make pictures look as good as they possibly can. And that sometimes involves using three, five, seven, whatever number of images to get across the best possible picture for our clients. Um, and I think we all understand that, but I, I think maybe some people don't realize that sometimes that doesn't mean using the picture that you just shot. Sometimes that means altering the pictures that you've already shot for a specific purpose. You know, just because you shot something in a specific way doesn't mean you need to use it that way or that you only use it that way. It's possible to use the same image multiple times as I found out editing this image. More than teaching you how to edit a twilight or how to edit an aerial, what I want to do is teach you how to look at your images, find the flaws in them, and fix those flaws so that you have a better overall image, whether it's daylight, interior, exterior, aerial, or whatever. I think what a lot of people don't realize is the work on your image doesn't stop when you hit the shutter. It continues here in Lightroom and in Photoshop, and I think it's a really important idea that um, you are always critiquing your own work. You're always saying, well, what's wrong with this? How can I make this better? And then you're thinking about how to do that. Um, a really good friend of mine once said that, um, you know, taking the picture is 5% of the work. You know, 95% of the, the work is making the image. That involves pre-production, you know, setting things up on site, you know, moving things out of the way that shouldn't be in the shot. I think we all do that. But it also involves fixing things in Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, you know, I think uh, an important consideration is to, um, oh, geez, that just flew out of my head. What was I going to say? You know, just be honest with yourself. Look at an image, find the flaws, and then figure out how to fix those re-edit the image and fix those flaws. So without any further ado, let's dig in and we're going to edit a separate image in the same sequence. Again, like I said, I hope we're going to have the same problems and we'll see how that works. Now let's pick the image files that we're going to use. Um, I, I do want to, like I said, do the aerials. Uh, this is from a pool company shoot. I've been shooting for this pool company and we just had incredible sunsets last night. Um, yeah, so th these are real skies. This is what we what we got last night, and it was an incredible show. Um, that's essentially that same shot. I wanted to go to a wider shot. Um, yeah, let's edit this. I think this is a pretty cool shot. Um, I like the fact that we can see the Salt Lake in the distance and the mountains. Um, this foreground is not the Salt Lake. Just setting that clear. All right, so the first thing I want to do with the sunset um, and with the twilight is kind of bass backwards from the way we normally edit. Usually what I'll edit is I'll start with a medium shot and then I'll put an overexposure and an underexposure beneath it. Not with a twilight. I'm going to start with an underexposure and then build up above it. Also, one of the things about Twilights is our colors are more extreme. Um, we're going to have a lot more blues and we're going to have a lot more yellows. And that is a conscious thought that I have when I'm editing. I remembered what that thought was I had earlier I couldn't come up with. And that is 
when you know what you're doing, shoot for the edit. I knew I was going to be shooting into bright light here. So I shot for the edit by shooting, you know, for the shadows, shooting a medium exposure, and then shooting for the sunset because that, that sunset is just gorgeous. So we've got four exposures here, a really good sunset, a uh, pretty dark, a medium, and a, a bright for the shadows. Um, one thing you may notice as I click through these, they move a little bit. That's kind of one of the things that happens with an aerial shot. You don't have a tripod 200 feet in the air. So we're going to have to correct for that. And when I was talking about some of the problems I had with the other shot, that was entirely it. Things were not lining up nearly as good as I wanted. Um, and I'm going to show you how I correct for that. But we're just going to go in as if I were editing this straight. So um, I will start with this medium exposure. This is about where I want the majority of this all to lie. Actually, let's go even a little darker. I think, I think that's where I want it all to lie. Um, I think that's a good exposure. I'm gonna bring it up just a teeny bit um, overall, I like the color of it. Um, I'm going to mark this green because this is a good one. I'm going to bring the blues in a little bit and let's, let's bring up the shadows a teeny bit and then bring the blacks down a little bit. So we have good blacks. All right. That is a good base exposure. Now, what I do with Twilights is I make a virtual copy of the same exact image and I tint it towards the yellows so that we've got a little bit of gold or yellow that I can highlight in there. So that's really good. Now let's go to our overexposed. We're going to bring this up a little bit and... It's looking a little muddy there to me, so I'm going to bring a little bit more yellow into that. I'm looking primarily at the house now. This is that last exposure was for most of the background. Now I'm looking at the house. I want to get this house exactly where I want the house to be. Um, bring up the shadows a little bit. I really do like to have some blacks in there, though. I like to have a really strong contrast. So that's what I'm looking at here. I think that's pretty good. Um, and now, mark that green. Let's make another copy of this and make a blue version of it. Just in case I need to take out some yellows or um, bring in some highlights in the shadow area. And that looks good. Actually, you know what? I'm going to set this, see this area right in here. Um, I'm not a big proponent of the people with the really nuclear yellow, orange, bright, um, windows. So I like to bring, I, I still like a little bit of a yellow in them, but that's what I'm looking at there, um, is being able to bring that down. Um, there's one of my light stands from shooting the ground shots. If I remember correctly, when I shot that, that might be my head right there. But um, me and the crew, we're all over there. Um, so that looks pretty good. So let's go back. So we've got a, a yellow and a blue. And then a yellow and a blue. Or that, that's the yellow. That's the blue. And then now all we're doing is we're going to look at the sky. Um, <laughs> I don't need to do anything to that. That looks perfect. We're going to mark that green Again, green just means, hey, I'm going to edit this one, and it's been edited. Um, so that looks really good. Let's select all of those. And I have a shortcut that just sends them all. I don't know why I'm getting this. I upgraded. Stupid thing. Um, so there we go. Let's stack them. This takes forever. This is a pretty modern Mac, too, and it still takes forever. 
Okay, the next thing I do is I auto align all the air, uh, all the layers, excuse me. This is where I had the problems earlier. They did not auto align very well because the, the um, drone was moving around too much. Also too, you'll notice I did have all those different stepped exposures. That's part of what I mean by thinking ahead toward the edit. If you know you're gonna have areas that are blown out or underexposed, shoot an exposure for, for those just to mask those one area in. Just because um, one area is blown out doesn't mean you can't shoot for that area and mask that in later. So think about how you're going to put something together and um, shoot for that. All right, now let's get our layers in order. Um, what I like to do is I like to have the sky on top. I will generally cheat and just do a select sky and go with that. I am going to fix this and fine tune it later, but that, that's a good place to start with there. As you can see, our brights to that dark are not going to match really well. That looks incredibly ugly. So one of the things we have to consider is bringing in all those different layers and, and almost hand tuning a graduated filter between all of them. So that's one of the things we're going to do. So um, my next layer down is our highlight yellow and then our highlight blue. Um, I tend to like it in that order, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Um, because I like to start with a blue base and then add just yellow highlights. I think that looks more natural. So I'm just going to go ahead and put um, dark filters on those. And then this is what I want my base layer to be. So I'm going to bring that yellow layer above it and put a filter on that. So now we're all set up and we are ready to edit. Um, so I'm just going to start bringing in yellow where I want it. Get that. Um, so this should be about the same light level, but adding yellow here. Um, this is the house that, you know, obviously we're showing off in the pool area and all that. So this is where I want to highlight. Um, it would help if I used a white brush. Then we'll see something happen. I hope. Where's my flow at? My flow is at 16, which is about where I want it, you know, because I want to see this come in gradually. Um, there we go. That's helping a lot for just making our house stand out against all the others. So does turning on the lights. Um, get them to turn on all the lights. That's what we've done here. All right, I'm going to make my um, brush a little bigger. And I'm going to put some yellow right into the water right there. So we've got um, that framing it. Um, but I'm not really going to put any yellow into any of the other houses because I don't care about them and I don't want to highlight them. I do also like to put some yellow fringing into trees. Um, I think that helps a lot. So there, that looks pretty good. All right, now let's look at our highlights. Um, our highlight blues, I'm gonna put some more form into this tree so that we see it. And a little bit right in there and in here. Oops, I got that house. Let's make that a little smaller, go to black and take that part out. I don't wanna highlight that house at all, but I do wanna highlight these trees right in front of it. There we go. And now let's go to our highlight yellow and let's bring in that house a lot more. And the pool area. And that hot tub back there. There we go. Look at that. Now that's starting to stand out. Now your eye, you know what house you're supposed to be looking at. And that I think looks really good. Let's, yeah, I love that dock out there too. So let's show that. Put a little bit of light into the shadow too. 
And there we go. That looks pretty good. Um, you know what? I am going to see. Now I'm looking at this. And I'm seeing that the patio area is too yellow to me. So I'm going to use that same layer of blue, which obviously is taking yellow out. I'm going to make a copy of that just by dragging it down here, bringing it up on top of everything that I've done. I'm going to delete the layer mask and then put a new layer mask on it. And all I want to do is bring in this area to bring down that yellow a little bit. I don't want that to be quite so yellow. Take a little yellow out of there. And that looks pretty good. Now let me see how my... Yeah, that sky works really, really good here. Um, the problem I had with that other edit, and it's possible because it was a lot closer, my um, roof lines were not lining up. And so what I did was I, I ended up having to go back and instead of using all those different exposures for the highlights and the yellows and the blues, I had to use the same exposure because the... the the drone was moving too much here it looks like we were able to get a good lineup um, but anyway what I ended up doing was I had to use one single exposure and made multiple virtual copies of it for my higher exposure level and for my darker exposure levels just to make them all line up and then I cheated the sky in just by moving it and creating a good mask so that you didn't see the the roof line so that's another thing that sometimes you're going to have to do. You're going to have to use the same exposure to pull multiple tasks. And I cannot stress this enough. You can re-edit the same layer multiple different ways by making virtual copies in Lightroom. You can make it yellower and then make it bluer to perform two different functions. You can overexpose it a little bit. You know, we're shooting raw, so we've got the room to move things around a whole lot. So do it, you know, don't just think, oh, that's the exposure I got. I'm stuck with it. No, fix it, make it work. Um, so I'm gonna bring this sky down a little bit more. Our, our mat line or our mask line is right along that um, mountain ridge line. And just, just so that you know, this out here, that is actually an island out in the Salt Lake. I just think that's kind of cool. So let's go to white. Let's get a broader brush. Everything is very feathered out. And let's just bring that in all the way down a little bit. And just look how nice we can even like fade out these houses a little bit more with that darker exposure. And now we don't even have to worry about, you know, that line of the horizon versus the, um, the sky. This, to me, is way too bright. It's taken away from what I want people to see. Um, so there. Maybe that's a little too dark. So let's reverse that out a bit. You don't want anything looking inky or stainy. Um, you know, the bottom line is you want to come back to this and you want people to think it looks natural. You don't want them to think that, oh, look at, look at how much work they did on that. This house has to come down. Um... I goes to light, lighter areas. Um, so don't, um, don't put highlights in areas you don't want people's eyes to go to. Darken them down like that. So there we go. That's, that's a pretty good start. Now what I do is I combine everything to a single layer and let's start fixing problems. Um, don't like these lights at all. There's no reason for them to be there. So I'm just going to use my spot healing tool, make it a little smaller and just get rid of those lights. Don't want people to look at that. And there's no reason. I don't care what that looks like. Um, uh, let's take that out. Oh, look, there's the form pools truck. That's who, oops, ooh, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's control Z that, um, Let's go ahead over here and take that um, light stand out. I'm going to use the clone brush, get it smaller. My um, keyboard is not where it normally is, and that's I'm having to reach for it while I'm shooting this. So that's why I'm a little out of sorts. So let's set our pick area there. 
And let's, oh, see, that's not going to work. See how it's turning too blue? Should be able to fix that. And let's just bring that whole shadow in there. And then we'll go over here, pick that yellow. And why didn't you pick? Let's um, pick and yellow that out. There we go. Let's pick there and take those little stripes out. Oh, see, sometimes it, you, you got to work small. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see. I think overall, that's about where I want it. Um, so fit back on screen. All right. I will now save this back to Lightroom. I go back and forth a couple of times. Um, and I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't either. You know, we're fixing different problems that we see in it. Um, there are some lights way back here. That's I-15 going towards Wendover. Um, so I think those are small enough and I like them. So I'm just going to leave them. So let's close out of that. Okay, here we are back in Lightroom. Um, and I'm going to do some final adjustments and just make sure that the colors are where I want them, the saturation is where I want them, um, the overall exposure is where I want it. Um, you can see it. our big hump is a little to the left here. It's a twilight. It's going to be dark. So don't, don't feel like you need to bring it up here where you do your daylight exposures. You know, then it just looks like daylight and you've lost all the all of what makes it a twilight you know and another thing is is don't neutralize out all those yellows you can see here where where i did try and take down the the overall yellow cast of that patio i still left some yellow in because we want the character of the light um, but we just don't want it to be nuclear um, i still think um, that um, that that could be a little better um, I, I think overall that that house should be a little brighter so I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and fix that but before I do I'm gonna come back down here go into guiding guided in transform and find my my verticals and set those up so that we've got good verticals and I'm using the house since that's our object of focus and those are the, the verticals I care about I lost a little to the left and right. I don't care. This is wide enough. Um, that that doesn't bother me, but I do like having corrected verticals. Now let's um, put in our horizontal and straighten that out because you know water is kind of level, so you want that to work. Okay, let's send it back to Photoshop. All right, here we are. One cool thing to do in um, Photoshop is use the Nick collection. Now you have to pay for it. it. Used to be that it was free when Google had it. I like Color Enhance Pro. Let's um, well, let's get rid of all these filters and again, you know, start it yourself. The first thing I noticed is I want this a little brighter. So I'm going to use light and dark and center. I'm going to put my center right on the house. I'm going to brighten up that center. I'm seeing that's center or that circle is probably half the width of the image. So I'm going to bring that down. And right there is exactly where I want that. Now you have no doubt what house we're looking at. It's a little heavy handed maybe in the vignette. So maybe I'll bring up the, the, the dark a little bit, but that works for me. Um, I think overall this looks pretty good. Um, another little cheat I like to sometimes do, let's see how it looks. That's the other thing. Don't rely, you know, have tricks, but don't always use them. They don't always look good. I'm going to use this foliage thing and see if I can get a little bit of highlights in the, in the trees. I like 
yellow glint in the trees. You know what? I, I really like what it does to that sunset. So I'm going to leave that in. I think that looks... See how it just punches up that yellow just a little bit more? Let's go with that. Another good trick for kind of melding everything all together and making everything really cohesive is to put a, um, a skylight filter over everything. The natural filter is way too heavy handed. I bring it way down, but it just kind of puts a color cast over everything especially with a twilight that I think works really well and kind of seals the whole image together and makes that all work. Um, is that, yep, that's dust on my, um, okay, I'm seeing a spot there now. That spot annoys me. These lights over here annoy me. I'm going to send this back to Photoshop and I'm going to take those little spots out. Oh, yeah. Here's, don't like those two cars. Let's get rid of those. Get rid of that spot. Um, there's a spot over here. Let's get rid of that. You know, you don't want the eye going to places you don't want it. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking out those exceptionally bright spots, I don't think. Um, You'll notice that it's a little noisy too. You know what? Red draws the eye too. Let's get rid of that. That's good enough. Who cares? These way too bright. Don't want the eye going there. There we go. Take that out while I'm in here. Now let's take a look again. Um, I think I shot this at 400 ISO. Um, I dropped my neutral density filter um, for night shoots. Um, but I still see a lot of noise in it. So I'm going to pop another copy on and I'm going to go into denoise, um, which is something I generally do for twilights because they're, they do tend to be a little noisy. Um, and just, I go with the, the average. I, I have not gone into this and figured out all the processing and what, what, what's good and bad. So I just, I let it go the way it is. All right, and I guess we're going to need a crop now. So I think right about there and right about there. Um, I like to use rules of thirds, but I don't live by them. You know, I mean, ideally, I'd want to put that house right there, but I don't like that crop. Actually, I do. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I think rule of thirds works really good here. Put the house on that third. Put the water level up there. Let's take a look at this final image. There we are. What do you think? Um, you know, this is, like I said, this is how I do it. I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong, that this is the right way, or not even that this is the only way. This is a way. Um, what I hope I've done here is not convinced you to do it my way, but more giving you some ideas to enhance the way you already edit. The bottom line with Twilight's, uh, well, with any editing, is it needs to reflect your vision. And ultimately, you get hired because of the way you produce images. So take what works for you from this and, um, you know, feel free to use it or not use it. Feel free to laugh at me. I don't care. This is what works for me. This is the way I'm going to continue to edit. You do what you what works for you. Um, but I do wish you good luck. And if you have any questions or anything that I can help you with, please drop me a line and let me know.